Hello, 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 everybody. Good evening, good day, good morning, wherever you are, whatever time of the day it is. Hello, 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 and welcome to our um, main challenge kickoff. So tonight we're going to kick off our main challenge, which is French country. So of course, here on Decoupage Queen, new month new challenge time um so tonight we're going to be talking about you know all things french country and i hope to be able to kind of i don't know maybe give some tips um kind of maybe shed a little bit of light on um what french country style is in case if you're not familiar and um yeah just inspire you with um my little project that i'm going to be creating and um yeah just kind of hope to kick off the challenge <laughs> hello hello michelle hello Teresa. hello uh hello oh from france there we go okay no pressure <laughs> michelle from france no pressure on the french country challenge <laughs> i hope fingers crossed that I got everything right because I did you know um kind of a little bit of um googling and everything over the past two days just to make sure you know that I I kind of familiarize myself enough with um the style uh to be able to kind of give um give people some pointers um into like which way to go with this challenge but of course you know as always um with our challenges it is meant to be a challenge for a reason uh so we try and do um sometimes slightly kind of you know easier ones uh something a little bit more like broad um um that can be widely interpreted and sometimes something a little bit more kind of niche um and so this time i think it is a little bit more niche um with like a specific style um but of course as always with our challenges it's um very much you know open to interpretation so maybe you see um this um this style or this particular theme in a slightly different light and we're always very very excited to see everybody's interpretation of this um of our particular challenge that we have going on hello 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 from florida hello Kalin. hello anya hello katai i hope that i pronounced that right from hungary hello 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 rachel um okay so we have some people here that is wonderful that is great so tonight i um have a this is a scrapbooking album, which is very fitting because it is a scrapbooking week. <laughs> it's going to be, I think it's uh, International Scrapbooking Day on the 7th, if I'm not mistaken. So this Saturday, it's supposed to be International Scrapbooking Day. And um, I think I'm going to be going live on Saturday as well for um, Scrapbooking Day uh, as part of a hop um so you know i thought for the scrapbooking day i want to challenge myself and actually like do maybe something scrapbooking related um so you know tonight we can kick it off with uh preparing the the scrapbook with a nice cover um for it so i'm going to switch over onto my um hands hello hello i'm going to fix the light as always, I have to kind of turn it down uh, <laughs> while it's on my face, otherwise um, you won't really be able to see much of me, <laughs> uh, just like a white blob. Okay, so here we go. So, and I picked out some papers, the papers that I personally picked out um, for the challenge uh, or for today's kickoff. Um, I have, this is Weather Damask uh, from Decoupage Queen Spring Release, um, two papers in A4 size. Now, um, if this scrapbook was a little bit smaller, then I could have got away with just one. But, you know, because it is a um, 8 by 8 size, I'm going to need two papers. And I also, you know what, while I was looking for papers um, for like, which paper am I going to use tonight? I also picked out a few other ones that I had in my personal stash from Decoupage Queen that I thought um, 
would also work great for this challenge. So in case if you, you know, you might not be um, kind of sure where to start or where to go with it. Um, so I kind of picked out a few papers that I think would also work great. So I'm just going to kind of flick through them all for you. So um, this one, again, very, very beautiful. I think this this could not be more fitting for a uh, French country challenge. But and I would have used this, but I only have one copy of it. So like if I want to cover um, my my scrapbook album, both of the um, sides, then I don't have enough paper. So of course, if you're doing a smaller piece, a smaller project, then um, one paper is going to be enough. So any of those, and this one, by the way, um, this one is called Elegant Sunflowers with a Chandelier. I think this one is a very, very beautiful paper for this challenge, would make a really, really great um, project and this one is from this i think this is one of the first designs that we released so um you know some i think more people might have this one in their stash than like one of the ones from the new release of course and then we have some of these lavender damasks uh from the latest release again a very very beautiful um paper to use so a neutral harlequin would even um, be fitting because it's in neutral tone. So even though you might not be thinking um, Harlequin pattern for a um, for French country, just because it is in these like neutral tones, it, it would also be fitting. So um, this one, this is one of my designs, uh, maximalist frame again because it's so like ornate. Um, it could make a very nice statement piece. Um, this again, one of my designs um, called Right to Me, and again because it's so like um, feminine and neutral tones and everything. Again, a very great paper to use. Then uh, this one, French florals, again, it's in the name, you know, it would be a great uh, paper to use. This particular one, I only have a little uh, cut off off of it, stained lace from, um, I think it was maybe summer release. Um, so again, neutral tones, but also with a little bit of lace, with a little bit of elegance. And we will talk about it a little bit more um, later on as to like, you know, exactly kind of what you're looking for, what kind of feel you're looking for when you're going for French country. Um, so this, again, one of those that you might not be thinking of when you think French country. So this one's called Muse Print. But again, I think this could be um, very nicely incorporated with some uh, maybe more elegant um, moldings and neutral tones and everything. Again, would make a great um, uh, project. So Roses and Stripes, um, again, kind of more neutral tones, more feminine, uh, spring portrait, a great paper, Penelope. Uh, so any of these uh, papers that I'm showing right now, oh, I have two of these for some reason, I pulled out both. So as you can see, we're looking for more like uh, feminine, neutral tones, uh, more uh, kind of, uh, country-esque with like florals and um, things like that. So any of these papers would be great for um, for this challenge. <clears throat> okay, right. I'm going to uh, take my covers off and I'm going to start working. Otherwise, I'm just going to um, talk for ages and we won't get anything done. So I'll take my covers off. So I'll just kind of uh, undo my ring binder, binder here and I'll take the covers off just so that it's a little bit easier for us to work with them so as you can see it has holes in it as well because it had like little ribbons going through it and um, I decided to take them off again makes it easier to work with it and all of that and then we can even um, put some ribbons through that are maybe going to be a little bit like better fit in terms of colors okay so we have our covers wait which way this way okay and what i did is i primed both of these uh covers the outsides of my covers with um, some white gesso this is the one that i used uh just to again save time 
Monday, I just applied one coat of it. Uh, the actual album itself was already white in color, so I don't need to like paint it white in order to work with rice paper. In this case, it's more of a just for grip. And then we're going to be applying our rice paper. Okay, hang on. I need to catch up with some of the comments. Just make sure that I've said hello to everybody and then we'll get started. Uh, on YouTube, Callen, hello. Um, I don't know if this is a video from earlier what no you're watching me live right now <laughs> hello hello everybody hello eileen hello roberta italian with a french heart i know <laughs> great choices from for french country thank you okay so rachel hello right so first thing that we need to do is we need to um separate parts of the paper that we're going to be um, gluing onto here. So we need to get them to fit the size. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my uh, clean brush and some water and I'm going to put my album over the top of it and just go around the edges with some water so I can rip the edges rather than cut i want to rip them and that is because i'm not going to be doing um rice paper i'm not going to be gluing down rice paper kind of flush side to side edge to edge we're going to be doing a little bit of you know blending around the sides maybe with some stenciling so ripped edges i are going to make it a little bit easier to do it so i covered everything with water around the edges and I just rip off the these parts here we don't want any of this white stuff and I don't want it to be like perfectly um like I said to the size of my covers I want it to be a little bit smaller so that we can then also fit in some stenciling and um main kind of thing is that what i don't want is i don't want um any paper to go over these holes where the ring binder goes because it's just it's just really difficult to then like sand it out or get it out get those um holes to be completely clean and clear of everything so we're not gonna do that we're going to keep them nice and clear and we're just going to blend it with paints and maybe some stenciling. Now, I don't know if I will be able to finish this project um, tonight. Probably, most likely, I won't be able to, but then we'll see. I don't know. Depends on depends on how much I talk versus um, actually create and craft. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Oh, that's so good to see you. So good that you uh, managed to catch me here. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Colleen. Hello. Hello, Leanne. Thanks for joining us. So, French country. Um, when you're thinking of French country, right, what I, um, kind of the, the simplest way to to describe it would be to to think of like rustic and um, farmhouse with um, added chic elements. So you're thinking neutral tones. You're thinking um, a little bit of that like rustic vibe so more like wood exposed um beams in their houses and kind of all of that kind of stuff like wooden floors and and um you're thinking of like in in that kind of way but then also with a little bit of added um femininity and elegance and a little bit of that chic so you're thinking if you're thinking french country furniture you'd be thinking a lot of um like neutral 
tones right like natural wood but also um the occasional painted and slightly distressed dresser or things like that so not everything completely painted white um or not everything painted in like blue or whatever but you would be thinking of like a mix of di different textures and different like neutral uh tones and things like that okay so let's have a look and see where we need to adjust it we did kind of a bit of like general this is um sideways okay so if we remove some of this on this side so that it's a little bit straighter at the end of the day i want it to be um, you know ripped and kind of slightly distressed looking but not crooked um, if I can help it. <laughs> um, okay, and then we're going to take a little bit off of here. And then you can also, like when you're thinking of, you know, Fr French country, whenever I think of anything, um that has to do with like french style uh, whether it be like provincial style or like um country or like parisian and things like that um i think what um french style in general and in any um way shape or form um is kind of associated with is that it should look elegant um, and kind of effortlessly put together, right? Now that that's, that does not mean that it does not take any effort to create that look. Um, I think in, if anything, like um, creating like that effortlessly put together um, takes a lot of uh, practice and, um, you know, a lot of like knowledge and things like that. But like whenever you think of French style, you think of like that, effortlessly put together kind of a little bit of uh you know oh i don't really care but somehow it all um really comes together very very nicely so it's all um it's a wonderful combination of um effortlessness and elegance okay so this will be uh post cover i got my decoupage glue but i'm also kind of thinking maybe 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 we should do the other half at the same time so that we can glue them both at the same time as well so since i already have this one down to the size we can get the other half the other paper done to the same size as well so anyways that's kind of the the gist of it and i hope that um you guys will take part in the challenge i'm really 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 looking forward to seeing everybody's take on this challenge and you know the best the best part about our challenges since um I don't know, a few months ago, I think now, um, is that we don't actually um, have like any kind of voting system or anything like that for our challenge winners. We um, pick our challenge winners completely randomly. So whenever you enter a challenge um, from Decoupage Queen, uh, when we go to pick a winner, we kind of assign a number to everybody and then we just draw a random number randomly. And so that means that whatever, you know, your skill set is, whether it's your first project or your um, hundredth project, everybody has um, a chance to win. So it's... Um, 
I see a lot of people in the group when they post their challenges, they're like, oh, you know, this is my my first uh, project or something like that. I don't know, you know, and they're like, oh, I've seen so many beautiful entries for this challenge. I, I wasn't even sure if I should post this, but, you know, hey, how and that kind of thing. So, like, don't um, get that out of your head right now, <laughs> because we do not look at that at all. Um, we kind of decided that it's a little bit unfair um to do it you know in like a voting system or whatever because um again um if you're a newbie in in any kind of thing then you may not already possess the some of the knowledge that other people have or you might not have the experience that some of the people have so um you know we we do not let that um affect any of it so yeah be sure to um to give it a go to enter the challenge and who knows maybe you will be that um lucky person that gets that gets the 50 dollar gift card to spend on decoupage green papers and a um your choice of decoupage queen uh apron or t-shirt with our logo so yeah <laughs> there it is okay so our papers are ready our covers are ready let's decoupage them on so i'm going to use pentard decoupage varnish and glue this is my latest addition to my stash so i am currently really really enjoying using it Okay, hello Sam, how are you? Uh, hello Kriya, how are you? Hello Sarah. I have to, oh no, Sam is watching us on silent. But hello Sam. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my paper in position and I always forget this and like remember halfway through i don't know why because like i do this every single time but i hope you know maybe i'm getting better at it um but i typically like to use a cloth to uh once i've applied glue to like put the rice paper back on because i find that i am a very heavy-handed person and um regardless of what kind of paper you use or what kind of medium you use um, when it touches a water-based product it's going to start seeping through you right and if you're a heavy-handed person you might end up putting some rips into it if you're you know anything like me um, so like using a cloth instead of your hand can really help with that Okay, so we've glued on part of it now. So I just kind of peel it back and I'm going to apply the rest of the paper on now. Again, glue, decoupage glue, and push it back and I gently. push my paper down from like that part that is already glued on towards the edges to minimize the likelihood of getting any air bubbles or anything like that underneath there. Hello and An Anglique, bonsoir, hello. I do not unfortunately speak French. Uh, I've always wanted to, but you know, I think I, think I have reached my limit um at the, at least at this point in, <laughs> in time in my life i have to reach my language limit so i have applied this glue underneath and now i'm sealing it with more glue over the top to again give it that give it a little bit more um what's the word longevity protection 
protection. There we go. Whenever you are applying um, glue over rice paper, but really any kind of paper, whenever you're doing decoupage, you want to try and apply your glue in as few strokes as you possibly can, because the more you go over it, especially again, if you're a heavy handed person, just like I am, um, the more times you go over it, the more likely you're going to be to, um, you know, to get the fibers to start um, coming away. So I need to poke that hole through here where we might um, where we might end up putting some ribbons through well not might but we definitely will <laughs> and then this can go to the side now I need to make sure that I put this the right way around so we have this if this would be the front then this would be the back like this okay so this way now you should see me when I try and put these um, back together onto the onto the ring binder um, honestly I don't know why but they still confuse me I don't know how many of these I've done now where I take the covers off and then I put the covers back on and I still get confused every single time and like I have to <laughs> I have to find another ring bound um album or something and, and see which way they're supposed to go <laughs> I don't know why it happens to me every time but you know it does I can't help it, unfortunately. How do you like the Pentat compared to Mod Podge? Um, it's definitely uh, much more smoother. Like, I don't know, it's weird. It's weird to explain, but it genuinely feels smoother. Although you guys know that I am a big fan of Mod Podge. It's, Mod Podge is forever going to be like the staple for me personally, because um, I don't know, it's like what I started with. I know that it works. It might not be, um, you know, the end all, all be all. It might not be the best glue out there, but it is a glue that is, um, that I know works. It works really well and, um, and it's easily accessible. However, this was really, really great. Um, I really like how it glides. Um, obviously, it is um, decoupage, varnish, and glue, so it is also be more. It's going to be more protective than Mod Podge. And what I really, really, really like is that um, this one, and I have it in matte. The one that I have it um, is matte, so um, like it actually does dry matte. So um, you don't really see brush strokes or anything like that, at least over rice paper. So. Um, which is a bonus because it's not necessarily the case with Mod Podge every time. So depending on, um, I think the batch of Mod Podge that you get, some of it is going to be a little bit more matte than the other, and some of it is going to be a little bit thicker than the other. So you know the likelihood of you getting brush strokes um, that are still visible after drying is kind of you know depends on how lucky you get with the with the bottle that you buy um and yeah so like there's no tackiness so i again if you've used mod podge before you will know that um as much as they say that it is a sealant as well at the same time yeah we all know that it still kind of stays tacky afterwards um and the only way to get rid of that tackiness is to varnish over it with a non-tacky varnish or you know go over it with something that's going to be non-tacky so um yeah and this one definitely not tacky after drying so yeah this is great <laughs> i definitely really 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 like it um so uh, decoupage um glue is on i'm going to quickly get my heat gun out and just give it um get it dry and then we can move on to the next step, which the next step, I'm not sure, I don't know, like part of me, I want to go in with, oh, 
as you know, I do like my um, crackle paste, white crackle paste. Um, and I, I think for like French country style, it would be really, really great. But also part of me just kind of wants to maybe just use paint around the edges through a stencil. So I don't know, while I'm drying this, I need to decide what we're going to do. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, if you have any suggestions of what you would rather see, then let me know, because <laughs> crackle paste or just paint? Hello, Mary. Hello, Art Angel. Hello, Kirsten. Hello. How are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I th again, like Mod Podge is great. Um, I can't. I can't fault it for what it is and for like, you know, the price and how easy it is to access and everything. Because again, um, these kind of more specialized products like, you know, Pentad, um glue and varnish and things like that. You don't usually buy them in store. Um, oh, you know what? I forgot to poke a hole through here. So uh, before it's all completely dry. Um, so like, you know, and I'm not the best at always staying um, on top of making sure that I have refills available. Um, so, like, if I if I run out, sometimes it kind of catches me out, and then I have to quickly run to the store. <laughs> and then I know that okay, worst case scenario, I can get I can get me some of that, and it's gonna work. Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm really well, thank you. Okay, Art Angel says crackle. I love crackle. I know. It's really good, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so should we do crackle then? Crackle and which stencil should we use? <laughs> which stencil should we use? So I have this one. This is a Stamperia one. Um, which I think is really, really nice. I really like the um, swirls, the patterns, and everything on it. Um, and then I also, again, like a, my go-to stencil lately has been this one from Cadence. I absolutely, I can't get enough of it. First of all, I love how big it is, right? 12 by 12, so like it covers, you can get the whole side in one go and then I, I just love the fact that it has all of these different patterns in it and um they're so beautiful and it just it works you know <laughs> hello donna good to see you too good to see you too welcome to our french country challenge so um how many of you that are here watching tonight are actually going to or planning to take part in this challenge. I hope that I can get you to take part in it because I want to see what you create. Honestly, it's one of my favorite things. Like whenever I go into Decoupage Queens and Kings group, which by the way, that's where you submit your challenge entry. Um, whenever I go into Queens and Kings group and um, I see somebody uh submit a challenge image I, like i have to zoom in i have to have a look you know it's so it's so exciting to see <laughs> pentad has really good crackle i recently ordered some i love it i have not tried pentad um crackle paste yet um obviously i do love the um fine line crackles and just uh, the two-step crackles love them um but i am yet to uh, try the crackling uh, paste, right? The the ones that are dimensional. What's the challenge? The challenge is French country. So create something, anything, a project inspired by French country, French countryside. So you can think, you know, uh, of more traditional French country or more like provincial or even like, you know, expand to like Parisian, something a little bit more um, modern and things like that. So, you know, um, any interpretation of French country style. 
have to penta crackle is the best i will definitely i will definitely have to try some okay so uh white crackle i'm gonna go for this is finaba texture paste in white crackle and i'm like right at the bottom of it now uh because i use it a lot okay and we're just gonna go with my usual <laughs> with my comfort stencil and we're going to apply it on so i'm gonna try and align it and then i will take a little palette knife and we will apply our white crackle which i mean you know this stencil has damask on it which goes really really well with our damask paper as well we're just going to apply it around the edges i'm not trying to get it in um you know very very neatly into to get the pattern to come through like all the way or anything we're going for that more distressed look here definitely definitely looking for a more distressed style now okay this is see this is i said that i'm going to try keep the the holes for the ring binder to stay nice and clear and now i'm going over them with a paste so you know i'm gonna have to get my barbecue sticks back out and um clean it up again in a minute okay so we're just gonna go in around i might go in a little bit more in a few places just to kind of add it a little bit more of a So that it's not so, you know, completely square. So there's more, I don't know what the word is. I hope that you, I hope you get it. Okay, so uh, now I just need to check. Okay, so this is gonna be fine. I need to plop my stencil somewhere for a second here. And before we move on to the other side, we need to clean up our edges. So again, it needs to be like, when you're thinking French country, distressed, but also elegant at the same time. So like you can't like, not, not too distressed, right? So it needs to be still a little bit, still needs to be classy. Not like completely, you know, I was left and forgotten about for centuries. Look, I'm looking for something. I wipe my hands on my apron. Good job I'm wearing an apron today. And I'll grab a bigger barbecue stick. And another one. And we're going to go through. the holes on the cover and just clean them up so I'll wipe off any excess onto my wipe clean it up because we need to leave them quite clear Otherwise, it makes it really, really difficult to move covers around when you actually go to use your album or notebook or whatever it is that you're creating. So, yeah, I'm hoping to see a lot of entries this month with, you know, 27 people watching right now. So, um, I better be seeing entries from all of you. Mm hmm Where did you say you got that stencil? This one is a cadence stencil and I got it from madarches.co.uk. Um, um, 
I don't know if she still has any of them, but it is a cadence stencil. So I don't know. I don't know where else you would be able to get it here, because I know that um, like cadence products are not that um, easy to come across. So I'll pop my cover over there, and we will get the other side. We'll get our stencil. And we will pop it on. And we'll do the other side. But it's definitely one of my favorite stencils. And I honestly, I feel like if I, if I come across this exact stencil again, um, if I'm able to repurchase it at some point, um, even before this one is on, <laughs> completely out I will because it's a it's a very versatile stencil so and you know because it's fortunately it is quite just like you know most stencils especially when they are so ornate and there's so many details in it they are they get caught a lot and you know when you use it a lot it kind of goes through through a lot of wear and tear so it's definitely one that I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to part with it so yeah we need more stencils like this okay Leanne says that she still has she might still have it so Leanne is the owner of my Duchess, so uh, she's also on our design team at Jacobus Green, in case if you didn't know. And she is amazing at creating cards and albums and mixed media projects and all of these kind of things. So, yeah, go check her out. And, of course, you know, this challenge was definitely... The theme of the month was definitely brought up by the fact that um, our last release here at Decoplash Queen, the spring release, has so many <laughs> uh, French country and kind of Pro Provence inspired um, papers that it's just, you know, you, you can't um, not have a challenge that's like that. <laughs> in this theme so yeah we just we just had to okay let's take the stencil off and then let's clean up the edges and after that I will have to once again excuse myself for a moment so I can go and wash that stencil off from the paste because like I said I have to look after this stencil <laughs> this is one of those stencils that I'm not ready to part with so I'm trying to be a good girl and I'm trying to look after it and um, yeah so you will have to excuse me for a moment which oh, also I recently acquired a Pentart stencil cleaning spray and I still haven't had the chance to give it a try but I am actually very very excited to try it out I've heard some really amazing um, things about it so people are saying that it really works great for cleaning stencils so I'm gonna have to give it a go because oh god knows that some of my stencils um have been uh extremely neglected so yeah not my not my proudest moment <laughs> but um I'll yeah I'll give it a try and um if it works really well I will let you know I'll let you know how that goes for me how it works out Okay, and then we will have to, you know, dry it, dry our crackle so that it, so that we can actually see some cracks from our crackle paste. Uh, 
Tina, hello. First time watching you, that stencil looks awesome over that damask decoupage. I know. They're just, they're, they're, it's a match made in heaven. What can I say? It's a match made in heaven. While I'm watching you, I'm making a mini album using six by six lavender papers. Oh, yes. And I can't wait to see that album. Um, and yeah, which by the way, we do now also have six by six um, scrapbooking papers. So all of our scrapbooking papers, or I think, how many do we have? I want to say we have six different albums. I'll have to count in a second. Right, I'm going to excuse myself to go and wash my stencil and I will be right back. So don't go anywhere. Stay here. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, right. And this as well, getting off my desk. Right. So, I am going to close my crackle paste before it starts drying up. And then we can go ahead and start drying it. Get some stuff underneath, so again, just, you know, you're gonna have dirty hands when you're crafting. What, what can you do? Right, so let's dry this and let's count. Um, let's count. How many scrapbooking papers, paper um, collections do we have? We have Queen Bee, we have Halloween, we have Christmas, we have uh, Steampunk Laboratory, we have Antique Roses and Vintage Lavender. Yes, so we have six different um, scrapbooking collections and they are, all six of them are now available in 6x6 and 12x12. 12 12. So yeah, for those of you that are into card making, scrapbook and things like that, you now have even more options um, to do things and you know with the antique roses and uh vintage lavender collections like there's no excuses to not be able to make um a french country inspired project because those are just you know again another match made in heaven they are just so perfect especially vintage lavender one oh my god there's so many beautiful um you know, lavenders and everything, which again, if you think of um, French countryside, like I can almost guarantee that like you can see the lavender fields. <laughs> oh, Nancy says she's painting a jewelry armoire while watching. Oh my God, what colors are you using? And um, are you using any papers? What papers are you using? We need we need all the information. I'm curious. I need to know more. And of course, you know, if you're enjoying what you're watching right now, give us a thumbs up or a heart or whatever. Any engagement helps. Um, it tells Facebook that you're enjoying what you're watching and then it might recommend it to other people that might enjoy it as well. 
So, um, yeah, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends that you think might enjoy it as well, um, on your pages, in the groups that you're a part of, where you think people might enjoy it, obviously only if you're allowed to do that. I don't want people to be kicked out of groups <laughs> or anything like that. So, yeah, go ahead and do that. Well, um, dry in. I can already see some really, really beautiful crackling happening. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? We'll be able to see it a bit more once we go over um, with um, some waxes. So we're going to be using waxes on here to kind of show off some of the dimension and make it all blend together a little bit better. So I'm just going to kind of seal my crackle with heat and then we will apply our molds or at least one of the molds for now sea queen and every blue and green paint paint i can find oh i love that paper sea queen is such a beautiful paper and i love the fact that she's not like it's not like a mermaid she really is sea queen so you know it's yeah I love it. Okay, so this is going to be our back cover. And this is our front cover. So this is the one that we're going to be... On. Okay, so this is now touch dry. It just needs a little bit of time for um, for crackle to start appearing. My desk is sweating. Right, so I also have this mould that I want to put in the center here that is going to then also be um this is going to go in the center of the centerpiece um these little scissors which i don't know for again while i was um thinking about what i want to do for this um and i was looking through you know what i already have on hand what resin pieces i already have uh poured out again i would use clay um but due to you know this being a live stream and um i prefer to paint all of my clay once it's already dry um so i don't want to if not scratchy scratchy um i prefer to paint all of my clay once it's all dry so resin works best for live streaming especially for more intricate molds like these ones um so let's apply our mold this was poured with um, resin, same as this one, but this one I actually already um, was already painted. And so we're going to kind of match this one um, to fit the colors on here. And we're going to glue down our mold with some heavy body gel. And in this case, again, like we could paint our mold ahead of time before we glue it down. If we wanted, if we wanted it to be completely neat and tidy, the best way to do it would be to uh, paint your mold separately and then glue it down. But again, when you're talking about French country, like I said, it needs to be kind of there needs to be a little bit of that like distressed and slightly like effortlessly chic chic applied um distressing so by applying our mold and then painting it and then kind of um and uh, aging it over the top it's going to blend it in um together a little bit and it's going to make it look um like it's more um a part of the project not just like some hardware that was applied onto the piece so it's going to um, make it blend in with the piece a little bit better and make it look a little bit more aged um if that makes sense again i feel like i'm talking a lot <laughs> i don't know sometimes it happens to me and i just kind of go blah, 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 all out you know, today is one of those days. You caught me on one of those days. I'm always very excited whenever I get to do a live stream um, here. 
on decoupage queen because I just love the papers, I love the challenges, I love everything about it. So, heavy body gel, as you can see, I'm just applying it with a lollipop stick. And spread it out. And now we need to, I'm going to stand up for this. And I'm going to try my best to get it in the center. Now, I'm not the best at doing it. Um, my eyeball meter is not always the best. But again, you know, like, where do you see the center? Like, from, from both edges or, like, from here? Which one do you count as center? As long as it looks fine, it's going to be fine. As long as it looks centered, it's fine doesn't have to be like actually precisely centered centered right so here it is we stick it down we press it down so I applied heavy body gel in quite a thick layer so that when I press it down it kind of squishes into it and so you might be able to see um, here on the edges we have a little bit of heavy body gel that kind of came out so obviously when we squish it out uh, squish it if there's a little bit more excess it's going to come out so i just use a little brush to pick out all of these little pieces to pick out any excess and you can also see some of that beautiful crackle coming through as well uh well thank you so much i'm not so good at the effortless look <laughs> never know when to stop yeah that's a i think it's a very common problem amongst us crafters it's um knowing when to stop is very very difficult and i always find it's because you know when you're adding those last final details that like really make it all come together um they give us a lot of like that's the most satisfying moment right it's the most um like it really like gives you that rush from creating and um you just want that rush <laughs> you're like oh my god this is amazing i'm gonna add it here i'm gonna add it here and then you know um, and then you end up overdoing it. So yeah, just being able to like stop in that moment is really, really hard. Uh, oh, thank you. Do you love it? <laughs> oh, hell yeah, Sam. Hell yeah. Hello, Yulia. Hello, Melanie from New Zealand. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness. Um, what day and time is it for you? Because it is, if it's, um, it's got to be like Tuesday for you now, right? Um, over there already, like Tuesday morning. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I? I'm. I pro I'm probably completely wrong. <laughs> I always get my <laughs> my uh, time zones all mixed up. Um, but yeah, was it Tuesday evening? I uh, yeah. I don't know. It always confuses me. <laughs> so I'm just again using um, heat gun just to get some my heavy body gel underneath here to um, to kind of grip a little bit better. Tuesday, eight twenty-eight a.m. Oh my god! I got it right. <laughs> That's so exciting. I got it right. I wasn't too wrong. <laughs> That's very exciting for me. Okay, so I can't remember. I think I did this with um, glaze. Oh my goodness. That was from, um, I think this is glaze. I can't remember what I did this with. I think this was a glaze just over uh white paint 
so, okay, it's no big deal if like our frame underneath is not going to be like the exact same shade or the exact same color. That's going to be okay. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take some linen impasto. Okay, I'm gonna have to excuse myself for my life again. Yeah. My cat has um conditioned himself and myself to like where like he lets me know that he wants to go outside by scratching the sofa. Um which uh, yeah, it's too much to get into. <laughs> Like, I don't even know how we ended up here. Um, but yeah, this is where we are. Right, so I have some linen impasto paint. I sprayed it with a little bit of water just to loosen it up. And we're going to paint over... Oh, well, now, I don't know. Should I paint this centre as well? I think I think we should. Or should we leave it so that some of the paper comes through? Mm, decisions, decisions. Okay, I'll paint the rest of the frame first and then we can decide together. I finished the canvas using the Golden Dragon while I'm watching. Oh, that's so cool. I love that paper. Will you post it in the group for us to see, please? Because I want to see, I'm very curious, I want to see. So, for those of you, again, in case if you're new here, in case if you have just joined and you didn't hear the beginning. Um, so, uh, tonight I am kicking off Decoupage Queen's May challenge. So, every month here on Decoupage Queen. Um, or specifically in Decoupage Queens and Kings group, um, we have a challenge every single month. And so the uh, theme changes every month as well. So last month we had Spring Inspirations. And in May, the theme is... I need a different brush. And in May, the theme is French Country. So tonight I am kicking off the challenge. We're creating a French country inspired piece, which in my case is a scrapbooking album cover. And anybody that wants to take part in the challenge, what you need to do is you need to create a project using really any um, decoupage queen's papers because um, we like to see uh, people's interpretations of challenges as well. Like it doesn't have to necessarily follow the exact rules of, you know, what particular style um, dictates or whatever. So you can take your own interpretation. Maybe you want to fantasize, um, create a little like fantasy piece um, with some steampunk papers, but in like a you know, if French country um, went steampunk all of a sudden. So, like, that would be so fun to see. Um, so, really, any decoupage queen papers, uh, but somewhat inspired by French country. So, what you need to do is you need to take a picture of your project and post it in decoupage queens and kings group by the 31st of May. And if you tag it or like write, you know, uh, when you post it, say that it's for French Country Challenge or hashtag French Country May, it helps us find it a little bit easier. Then you will be entered to in a in a prize draw, and we do not like vote on winners or anything like that. So anybody is um, in for a chance to win. Um, and you will be entered into a prize draw and the prize is $50 to spend in Decoupage Queen store 
on decoupage papers, whether, well, it can be rice papers or scrapbook papers, your choice. You just get a $50 disc, um, gift card. And uh, your choice of either decoupage queen apron or t-shirt. And yeah, so that's, that's the price. So yeah, this is what we're doing here. And I really, really hope to see a lot of entries this month. At some point later this month, there will also be a blog post that will go up on decoupagequeen.com that I'm going to put together uh, with some of our design team projects that would also fit the theme. So look out for that. There will be some of that, you know, in case if you need a little bit more inspiration, um, we will kind of announce it on the page when it goes up. So keep your eyes peeled and also uh, we are going to have another design team member uh, go live mid-month I want to say hang on let me have a look at the calendar um, on the 16th on the 16th of May we're also going to have another design, design team member go live with a challenge inspiration stream creating live to kind of uh bring you a little bit more inspiration for the challenge so again in case if you need a little bit more time to think about it or anything like that you know there's a whole month ahead of you to get it to get a project done and submitted oh thanks sam <laughs> Love them so. I think I'm only doing French country projects from now on. So Teresa says that she's only gonna do uh, French country projects from now on. Um, yeah, I can see why. Honestly, it's it's such a beautiful style. It's such a gorgeous style. Like, and I, I think this the, like French country and provincial and uh, you know just in general French style is probably one of the best suited styles for decoupage in general uh kind of the the whole genre of decoupage itself is very well even the word decoupage right it's very french <laughs> i'm pretty sure um it's a french word right if i'm not mistaken um so it comes from from there so it's um you know it could not be more fitting let's go back to our roots, our decoupage roots, and create something very, very um, French chic. French chic inspired. So when we think of French country, we want to think neutral tones, a little bit of a rustic feel. Uh, but also elegant and feminine at the same time. So there's there's definitely room for a little bit of, you know, exposed beams and um, antique furniture, antique wooden furniture and wooden floors and all of that kind of stuff together with a beautifully painted and distressed um cream dresser right so kind of we're thinking we're thinking that kind of in that kind of way okay so painted the mm, i don't know right i think we have to to make our centerpiece pop a little bit we will have to perform a little bit of sacrilege and paint over our decoupage over here just to make it just to make our centerpiece pop so our decoupage paper can serve as our beautiful beautiful background okay so let's get this mold dry and then well, you know what? We will get this finished tonight. <laughs> there I was. Not sure if we can get this finished tonight, but we definitely can. 
So the last steps that we're going to have is going to be to kind of go over our um, our crackle and mold with um, some dark wax and then um, add some ribbons and put it well no I will add the ribbons and put it back together offline you know what because um, I don't want to embarrass myself <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself too much because um, honestly it is um, it's yeah comedic how much like my brain cannot comprehend how to put these back together on a ring binder so uh, yeah I'll put it back together and add a ribbon um, in my own time if you don't mind <laughs> thank you someone really needs to do a furniture project with the chateau I agree I agree I would love to see that I would absolutely love to see that okay so waxes 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 and i think we're just gonna go for dark furniture wax um the one that i like to use or the one that i'm using at the moment is rustoleum finishing wax dark finishing wax so it's not black it's like a it's brown and i'm specifically so typically i would um go over um anything that i'm wax uh, anything that i'm planning to do a dark wax technique on um i would go over it with clear wax first and then um, apply dark wax and wipe it away but in this case i'm specifically not going to do that i'm just going to go over it with dark wax because if we don't um go over it with clear wax it's going to kind of go in a little bit deeper into our paint and it's going to kind of stain it a little bit give it a slightly like deeper shade um a deeper look so we will we will do that instead of you know our classic um our classic like clear wax and then everything else on top uh i'm right there with you i feel your pain I hate putting binders back together <laughs> thank god <laughs> thank goodness it's not just me okay so i'm using a dry natural bristle brush uh, because i just used a um heat gun on here um the wax is like really really melty at the moment it's very liquidy you can probably see it in the light how liquidy it is so we're just going to apply it over it's really like melting in general this particular wax rustoleum dark wax is very soft it doesn't take much for it to uh really soften up for it to really become liquidy so like if you also add heat into the mixture um yeah it really starts flowing <laughs> but i mean it's fine it's not doing anything it's not doing anything um bad to it there's no like there's no cons to it really so we go over our mold So we're kind of going for by like you know painting it all in ivory and then going over with a dark wax and then wiping it away what we're creating is a little bit of like a carved wood look which again imitating imitating french country style it's um it's great because we have a little bit of pattern behind it we have a little bit of um lighter colors and everything but then we also have a little bit of that like carved wood imitation that adds to the whole look so just like this we have a nice frame i don't know whether to go over it with a little bit of gold as well um tempted to go over it with a little bit of gold but 
we'll see once we've done the edges and everything. So now I'm gonna go around the edges and so as you can see I'm kind of stippling it in there and it does go over onto onto our paper as well a little bit but the good thing about it is that it is wax so when I go to um, clean it up I can just kind of smudge it around and it's going to create like a shadow look rather than if you was to do this with paint and obviously if you get paint onto your paper uh, you're not going to be able to smudge it around as easily and create like a shadow so with wax it really gives you that gives you more of that opportunity and if you get into into parts where like you can't get your cloth in or anything like that then uh, grab yourself a little q-tip and then you can really go in there and smudge it around and it creates a nice shadow just like this I know that that frame is really really good <laughs> it is a really beautiful frame other side yes for gold okay I guess we'll have to just add a tiny bit of pizzazz to it <laughs> tiny bit of bling okay. again go over with the cloth first to get the majority of it off and then anything that I can't get to use a little makeup stick right not earbuds because don't stick these in your ears definitely especially these ones that are like sharper <laughs> Um, right, yeah, that's not a bad colour match, not bad at all. Every project can use a touch of gold, yes, I could not agree more. I don't know what to do with the back, you know, I might, I might have to like not finish it just yet and like do the back as well, not sure, not sure what to do with the back. Okay, so let's go over. Over our stenciling with some wax too. So I do it in parts. Do one side. Here. Remove some of that excess, and the colors really blend together very, very nicely. I think we will have to lighten up the frame a little bit because it is kind of getting a little bit lost at the moment. I don't know if I don't know if gold is going to do it. I, I'm tempted to go more. Um, towards just like dry brushing it with some lighter colored maybe just dry brush with a little bit of wax uh, a little bit of white wax over the top I, don't know, I think white would work better than gold maybe gold on the edges on the outside um, we'll see
hands, smudge around and stencil in. Make it blend in. There we go. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, hello, Max. <laughs> Thanks for popping in and saying hello. Well, thank you. Thanks, Donna. Thanks, Karan. Okay, Sam says ivory. Donna says she struggles with that too. Yeah. No, see, it's like, it's that, for me, it's always the last steps, right? Especially when, when it's one of these kind of projects where everything just kind of, it, it all goes so well. Um, and everything just comes together so nicely but then you're just looking for that like last final um, touch and it's just figuring out exactly what is going to be the the final the final addition because like that th that last bit that you add is really going to be what like takes it one way or the other and, and that does not necessarily mean that like one is better than the other but it like it also can mean um that it's going to give you like you know it can take it either into more chic or more um rustic for example right like which way do you go do you go for a more chic style with gold or do you go for more uh natural tones um with just you know without without any bling um because i think both would look really really nice so it's just picking one is difficult <laughs> like ideally i, I want to do both i want to have both i don't want to have to choose so yeah, just picking that one is, it's difficult. Okay, so that's the back. The back of our notebook, notebook, album, not notebook. And then let's put them together. So this would be the front and the back. Front and the back. So beautiful. I love it so much. Okay. And then which way do we go? Right, well, first of all, let's glue this down. No, we'll glue this down last. Maybe. We'll go for. See, I don't have any like, ivory matte wax. Like, it would have to be paint, and I don't really like adding paint over a waxed surface because it doesn't tend to hold on very well. But I do have matte white wax. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of white wax and we're just going to add it over. We're going for it. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> we're going to go for it. What product are you painting on and wiping off? Uh, it's furniture wax. Um, dark furniture wax from Rustoleum. Firm believer in having it all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> thank you, Yulia. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Cool if it flakes off anyway. It, yeah, it can be. It can be too. Um, yeah, finger is not going to do it. I'm going to have to use a brush. That's not enough. I need a brush here. 
And you know what? I think this is one of those projects where it's very unlike me, but I'm going to have to say no to, um, to uh, paint splatters, which again, if you know anything about me, you know that I love me a bit of paint splatters. Um, so it's a very, very tough decision, hard choice to make. But I think in this instance, it would be a little bit of an overkill. I might have to apply white wax in a few goes. So we'll do kind of a general brush over to lighten it up. A little bit. Couldn't work out what it was. That's okay. Thank you so much. Not quite a project for it. Yeah. And then we go over with the finger and just like not cake it on, but apply it a little bit thicker. Over the tops. Because I just want some of those details of this frame to come through. Oh my goodness, we've been going for an hour and a half almost. But then again, it's a whole project in an hour and a half pretty much, right? So, not too bad, I guess. <laughs> it's not too bad. But this hour and a half has gone by so fast. I barely even noticed. Again. Yes. I think just going with white um, wax over it is definitely the right choice in this instance. But then we will add a little bit of gold onto the scissors and onto the edges. Okay, so that's the frame. Oh, thanks, Leanne. Here is my gold metallic wax. Not too many things on my desk. Vintage gold. I mean, you could not. It, it can't get any, any better here. A little bit of vintage gold. Now over the scissors. Make them nice and shiny. Thank you. The time is fine. It's a pleasure to watch you. Oh, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Linda. I'm really, really glad that you guys enjoyed tonight's project. So with the gold scissors. And then we will go over the edges. Are the scissors from a mold? Yes, they are. This is a Prima mold. Um, oh, I'll show in a sec. So just a little bit over the edges. I don't know how well you can see it on camera. Probably not very. Um, but it just adds like a, just a tiny bit of chic on the ends. So I will post pictures of this um, probably at some point tomorrow. 
because uh you know it's evening so tomorrow when it's when i have some daylight i can then take some nice pictures of it and then also tomorrow um our own shannon from our design team of picking boots vintage um is gonna be going live um over on our instagram page so she's gonna go live at um 12 p.m uh eastern time so that would be what does that make uh i want to say it's five five p.m british and then 6 p.m central european so if you're around then go and watch her on our on our instagram page because she's going to be creating something with um our abandoned paper abandoned rice paper so make sure you tune in and check it out here we go so a little bit of gold on the edges and then we will grab some good old super glue oh this mold um i can't remember what it's called but it's this one from prima and then we need to pop a little bit of super glue onto our scissors Again, ideally, you want to be doing this with heavy body gel, but you know, um, I I do like my super glue from time to time, <laughs> and it's just so much quicker with super glue. There we go. It is complete, almost. Now I need to put ribbons in and put it all back together, but again. That'll have to be in my own time because trust me, it will take me an embarrassingly long time to, <laughs> to put these covers back together. Okay. So let me pop these lights, turn these lights down a little bit so that you can see me and show you my face once again. Yeah, it's a very, very nice mold. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Tina. Uh, okay, so here we go. Hello. So, is this glued down? Okay, yes. It's holding on. So, here is our finished, um, our finished covers. So, this is the front. And this is the back. So, very, again, I think very simple techniques like we didn't do anything um extraordinary here um it's decoupage paper which of course you know helps <laughs> decoupage rice paper um white crackle through a stencil and um a couple of molds and brown wax uh so very very simple simple techniques but when you put them all together um without overdoing it um it definitely uh pays off in a very very beautiful way so um again yeah pictures coming tomorrow hopefully <laughs> and yeah like i said uh tune in tomorrow on our instagram page to watch shannon create um i don't know what she's going to be creating i just know that she's going to be using um our abandoned paper in a one size which is really really big um but yeah other than that be sure to enter the challenge again may challenge french country um you have until the 31st of may to enter submit to your project inspired by French country in Decoupage Queens and Kings Group. If you're not a member yet, then join. There should be um, a link in the description of this um, live stream, wherever you're watching it from. Um, join in, submit your piece, and uh, you know, you can win $50 gift card to spend on Decoupage Queen 
rice papers or scrapbook papers and either a t-shirt or an apron from Deck Watch Queen as well. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in and for spending this hour and a half with me. I truly enjoyed um, tonight. Thank you so much for keeping me company and I will see you all